Welcome to Getting Juicy with Rachel and Hero. Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody hello. doing? I realize we have no audience as no far as a responder, way. but that's okay. That's okay. I'll say I'll I'll respond to that. I'm pretty good. Go ahead. And um, we might as well kind of jump right into who's coming on pretty quickly here. Um, you Absolutely. know, sometimes we kind of like shoot the shit and we are very cryptic as to who's coming on the show even though I know you can see it in the show notes yes. <laughs> we kind of just blabber <laughs> on and we finally introduce our guest but we're going to do it first so yes. our guest uh today um due to popular popular demand of having her back um is chef Christina from Hell's Kitchen fame and yes. she's coming on for the second time um, because so many of you, um, actually requested and said, we can't wait for a part two, because we kind of did, I think we even said in the podcast in that first recording, we said, oh, we mm-hmm. have to have you come back. And yeah. I, I feel like she's like, oh yeah, for sure. She so did they, say that. Yes. People, people have just been holding us to that. Yes. And so we're just, we're so lucky and, um, super excited to have her back on with us today. Mm-hmm. So we get to catch up and see. Uh, what she's been doing for the past like how many months has it been now that we had her on it's been close to a year year you think it's been a year maybe it has it's been close to a year since we've had her okay yeah Mm -hmm. so then so since then there's been one or two maybe it's just one hell's kitchen that actually fully ran yes um which we ended up having trent and garvey on and he was the winner of hell's kitchen that's correct um so that happened um i'm sure she's not just with the filming because i don't think that takes up crap a of her time but enough um but yeah I know like she- a few weeks at a time I think they they've broken it down too so yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and two two back to back so like six weeks of recording for sure yeah. yeah and then opening up restaurants because she is the VP of culinary um which I just I read on her Instagram like what is her because I've heard of a few official titles for her and she calls herself the VP of culinary for mm-hmm. Gordon Ramsay the Gordon Ramsay group so mm-hmm. Um, she is, uh, not as much at, when we talked to her last time, she wasn't as much in the kitchen as she was, you know, sitting at the head of the board table, kind of like getting, you know, restaurants opened and, and being almost like Gordon Ramsay's right hand woman, Mm -hmm. powerful woman getting, getting shit started and opening Mm -hmm. up stuff yes. and blah 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 <laughs> he's done a lot a lot but, and even in the last yes. year I mean and I'm sure we'll catch up and see yep. how the year has been for her from 2021 to now and uh, this the world has opened up uh through the pandemic and yeah how, that too. you know fine dining and food and uh culinary industries are uh, people are so happy for it to be accessible even more than it once was before yeah, absolutely. And there's, yeah, there's a few questions along the, along those lines that I wanted to ask her about, like, for example, even here um, in Canada, or at least where we're in, in BC, there's so many restaurants that are still looking for staff. They can't find staff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been, that's almost been a pandemic in its own sense. It's just getting yeah. staff and getting, you know, um, it just being able to open for uh, typical restaurant hours. And mm-hmm. it's not because they don't want to be open. It's because they don't have people to work. That's right. So I wonder if it's the same where she is. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll have to see, right? And keep in mind, you know, she spends a lot of her time through North America as well. So I know that, you know, since everything happened, uh, since we've spoken with her last, again, Chef Michelle Treble, winner of All-Stars 17, season 17, Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle has also moved into helping with the test um, food and the test developing and stuff. Right. So that's also, you know. That's exciting. So Christina and, and Michelle work very close together and help to develop the concepts, right. but also then the restaurant development. So they're going across North America in their region. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. And I wonder, I don't know if she's, I feel like maybe the answer is no, that she hasn't been to Canada since then. Cause I knew we were like, Oh, open up something in Canada. <laughs> right. I don't think, um, I don't think she has been unless if no. she was on the down low, but exactly. I, but definitely I remember even she was saying in terms of opening up GR and a, restaurant uh concepts that they definitely have toronto and vancouver as the two markets they would focus on once they get to that point so i mean who knows you never know what could happen right yeah i know you never know what um, uh sorry i got distracted by that that yummy cough (laughs) how are you feeling how are you feeling i'm doing okay yeah okay Um, it's day two of being asymptomatic 
um, for myself. So that's a relief. So by Sunday, Good. I'll be fully so-called cleared as far as what we're supposed to be following. So yeah, yeah. 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 Otherwise I feel Good. fine. I got Good. on the, my bike yesterday and rode for 30 minutes. No problem. High intensity. Oh, that's, so, that's so good. That's yeah. very lucky. That's really, really good. Yeah. And to if clarify I, if you were like, what are we if, talking about? Yeah, I, did, I'm... I, I did finally, I caught the bug. I caught the vid, the, the vid bit me, um, got, you know, vid bit and it was really frustrating in the timing of course, for other reasons, wasn't the best, but as far as pure symptoms go, I got very lucky. Mm-hmm. And I did notice some very slight symptoms, temperature, congestion, mainly it felt like a chest infection, some yeah. stuff more and like into the base of the throat and a yeah. bit over here, but otherwise um, I got very lucky. So I know others yeah. have not been as lucky. So I can only imagine the severity of yeah. everyone else's cases, including Omicron variant or before it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just, just in case you're wondering what the ham, 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 ham might be. <laughs> including Um, the beautiful 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 excess of development in that part of the body that i've had since i've been born so it only makes it more yeah sure okay okay they didn't know where that was going um i i have a question for you just because it's food related and i Uh I, this is just a silly question yes and i want to ask christina this as well what was the last snack you had uh yam fries as i was running home from my from my new job okay where did you get them from uh white spot really interesting you you just get like is there a to-go white spot near you uh and white spot is canadian by the way it is canadian yes it's a burger burger and fry joint and definitely one step above fat burger um (laughs) uh no i i went for lunch with my new colleagues so it was leftover from lunch because i'm a slow eater so i didn't want to feel like i had the shove of all that in my mouth okay feel bloated. So it was okay. uh, leftovers coming home. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm and what was your last snack? My last snack was just before we popped on here and it was a weird one. Okay. It was kimchi. No, not kimchi. I had this weird craving for like sweet pickles. You know, those sweet oh, bre- those bread and butter good. pickles that you'd put those on. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like a tuna sandwich or something. I don't know. Yes. It was on all kinds of things. I just went to the jar and I had like, I don't know, like a scoop full of those. And then I had a bunch of, um, uh, seaweed snacks <laughs> <laughs> i love it i mean yeah talk about sodium probably and all the stuff i just ate but meh, meh. Uh, i don't do it very often so meh. but just drink lots meh. of water meh exactly so water sweet pic- and electrolyte sweet, yeah sweet pickles and uh and seaweed snacks sweet pickles mm. seaweed snacks i love so me love me a nice sweet pickle snacks. sweet pickles seaweed snacks yeah wow seriously a nice sweet pickle could do without the seaweed, but I love me a nice sweet pickle. Sweet picker, picker, sweet picker. picker. What sweet the pe- heck? Sweet, sweet pickle, pe- sweet pickle, pepper. Pe- 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 is this thing on? Working. Okay, yeah, Hello? clearly it's Hello? on. Hello, McFly. And big, Hello. I know we really got like new ampl- amplification in our microphone technology, so now yes. anything we say does not go unnoticed. Yeah, that's as true. If it, as if it did before. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, no. Oh, I forgot. I don't know what I was going to say. Wow. But I, well, wow. what I can definitely say is that I always say you look beautiful, but you really do look quite stunning, Miss Rosa. Oh, bah. Thank yeah, you. You do. You'll you have look to, absolutely beautiful. And if you're listening to this, you have to go on our YouTube channel and check out Getting Juicy with Rachel and Hero. And verify that plug, what I am saying plug, is verified. Plug. Yeah, yes. exactly. Verify, yes. plug. And exactly. speaking, of, speaking of which, so a bit more of our spiel. Okay, go to YouTube, subscribe. Mm-hmm. Like, share, whatever, shamoozle, shabamble, shabobble. I don't know what the hell I'm saying anymore. Go on Spotify. Um, go on all Spotify. All those, all those sweet things to find us. There she is. Yes. Hello. 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 Oh, you're right on time. Don't worry. I yes. saw you looking at oh, your watch. Sorry. Yeah. I was yeah. Uh, running late from a, from a meeting and I'm in Las Vegas. So I wanted to come up to my hotel room because the casino floor is just uh, a little crazy down there right now so you mean you Hi. didn't want to record in tons Hi. of slot machines and people smoking and probably doing tons no. of rowdy business i considered taking it from hell's kitchen just so you guys could see like how that in the backdrop but yeah. uh, i didn't want to i didn't want to get interrupted uh, i'll take a chip you know, and dale so, yeah i'll take a chip oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> love that <laughs> love that i'll pick oh. a couple up 
I'm okay, this is a weird. Th- okay, no, okay. I was gonna like go on a weird tangent about the Thunder Down Under because I went hey. to a show. No, this is so an aside. It's not even really like ha- nice to see you. By the way, sorry, yes. we're like it's great all to see you place. too. <laughs> I know. No, no, it's great. I love it this way. Oh uh, my god! No, I went to see. I went to see Thun- Thunder Down Under. Um, yeah. I was at a trade show for a fashion accessor- accessories company I work for at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Mm-hmm. My boss asked us, he's like, I'll pay for one of your shows. I'll pay for it. What do you, what do you girls want to see? We're like, we want to see Thunder Down Under. So we got it paid for by my boss. Okay, great. And then I ended up going there and I ended up seeing the MC. I recognized, okay, I live in Canada, folks. Like I don't live in the States. Like, I mean, I know they get people from all over the world. I go to this yeah. show. I recognize the MC and I'm like, I said to my, my coworker, I'm like, dude, this guy was in rehab with my ex-boyfriend in <laughs> BC, in British Columbia, Canada. Like how- That's amazing. And that's a true story. Like how random. And I ended oh, up yeah. saying hi to him after. And he's like, totally recognized. It was just, it was very yeah. awkward, but he also, you know, he's, he's been sober for a number of years, which was fantastic. That's great. And he did yeah. recognize me too, but that was, yeah. Anyway, that is a small, juicy uh, start. Small, weird, yeah. <laughs> small, talk- big world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's wild how that happens. Yeah. So how, how have you been, Christina? It's been, we were like, man, it's been close to a year since we've had a face-to-face with you. And um, of course, people have been requesting and wanting to know how you're doing and connect again. So we do appreciate your time as always. Yes, and um, want to hear all about how you've been and how everything has been on your side. Yeah, uh, good. Um, let's see, since the last time we <laughs> talked, I... Uh, <laughs> I live in Dallas now, so okay. I'm practically a cowboy, Whoa. so there's that. Yes. Uh, we, um, uh, we have a new uh, CEO for the U.S. business, just some um, changes in the company, all great, just so we could kind of separate the U.S. business from the London one, yeah. um, and they put our headquarters in Dallas and our test kitchen down there, so oh. um, yeah, made that move in June, uh, me and my, my cat, Scout. I uh, had a nice little road trip there. So um, yeah, uh, getting, getting used to, I've been saying howdy a lot. That's about, um, that's about the, the uh, amount I feel comfortable embracing Texas uh, okay. at the okay. moment. Uh, yeah. Dallas is really cool, but I, uh, um, it, yeah. it's never lost on me that I'm in, uh, I'm in a state where, uh, you know, th- so some of the, the views are mm. uh, not fully aligned with, with mine. Mm-hmm. So uh mm-hmm. Uh, super conscious, but quite honestly, and I'll knock on wood, I haven't been, um, I haven't like been reminded of that in Dallas. The people are That's wonderful. Good. It's a great city, amazing food scene, um, very flat. Uh, so I'm getting <laughs> used to that coming from, uh, you know, having the mountains and uh, Colorado yeah. <laughs> River kind of right down the road here. Mm. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's probably the biggest thing. What else? Um, we just wrapped, I was just in uh, LA for uh, most of January, all of February, and then some of March, we were filming uh, Hell's Kitchen seasons 21 and 22. Right. Uh, so yeah. that's super exciting. Um, I think they're looking at a, a, a summer release for season 21, and it's it's uh, it's a good awesome. one. Um, awesome. My uh, my headphones are really bugging me for some reason. Is it all okay. right if I if I just go regular? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Can I just yeah, so yeah. Sorry. Yes. No, no, don't be sorry. Don't. I'll- Oh my gosh, we haven't talked to you for a year and you're already becoming more Canadian before our eyes. What happened, eh? <laughs> so sorry. I don't <laughs> too polite. Uh, hold on, let me just get you on speaker now. So I can okay. sorry about that. Not at all. It's perfect. Uh are we all okay? There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. That's you're good. Yeah. Sorry, I was fucking the hell out of you when I kept Um so yeah, season all good. 22. Um, it's super mental, you know, we're on set with Gordon. Uh, can you hear okay? Or is, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually just, yeah. I'm turning up the volume on my, on my mic and, or my headsets. I can hear you perfectly. Yeah. yeah you're perfect. Oh, thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> love to, love to hear this, uh, in real time, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, uh, did, uh, yeah, to about just over two months in, in LA, which was wonderful, super intense, but some, uh, some great characters, some really good talent. Uh, awesome. Yes, yeah, fun season. Up. Um, yeah, those are probably the, the two bigger things. Uh, the move to Dallas, and then uh, we got a couple new restaurants open: one in Chicago, one in Boston, and one down in Orlando. Uh, got about nine more. Uh, actually, that's a lie. Uh, we got about 14, 14 more to open this year. Uh, what? So, yeah, 
been a uh, 14. Is that a record? So how many of you, what's the most you've opened in one year? Uh, probably four. Um, but now, <sighs> okay. <laughs> US, like uh, just me for the corporate team in the U S now we yeah. have like a massively built out team. So uh, we can kind of divide and conquer and, uh, wow. we're in good position for it. Um, uh, when we made the move to Dallas, uh, Michelle Triple, who won season 17, uh, yeah, 17, yes, um, <laughs> she got from Dallas and had moved back there after COVID. Uh, she wasn't coming back to Hell's Kitchen Vegas, so I ended oh, up yeah. hiring her as uh, one of my development chefs, uh, so she's back with Gordon, but in a, in a bigger role and uh, one that's more exciting for her, so uh, that's, that's super great. Um, yeah, so just just been just been cooking away. Uh, not a bad gig though. We have a, a great test kitchen uh, that's on the first floor of the uh, office building, so we just kind of play with food all day. And uh, oh my yeah. god! So with that being said, are you doing more cooking than you have in a while? Because the last time we spoke to you, what kind of asked you? I'm like, so are you like, are you in the kitchen much? I think at that point you're like, you know, honestly, not really. Yeah, but. No, yes and no. Um, there's definitely like a lot more development. Um, but uh, I like, I think I got promoted again since the last time we talked to you. So I'm the vice president of culinary uh, for wow. now. So um, with that, there's Jeez. a lot more responsibility uh, on the on, kind of like on the front end. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is that we actually have a test kitchen. It's in the office building. So um, what's great for me is that I can go down, I can uh, chat with Michelle. Uh, and Andrea, the other young lady on our, our Dallas team, um, about what I'm thinking or what I want for menus, and then let them kind of execute it. And then I'll give them pointers when I come down, a couple small tweaks, and then kind of go from there. So um, definitely a lot more conceptualizing, but I'm not like, definitely not in a restaurant setting really at all. Mm -hmm. um, and then also just trying to uh, pass the baton uh, a bit and help mm -hmm. Uh, Michelle, Andrea, got the rest of my team to, uh, yeah, to to kind of step up and and develop their skill set uh, so that they're ready for the next, uh, next move when uh, when it presents itself. Yeah, it's amazing, right? Because you think about the growth. Is, I think the TV show is a great way to see growth and potential because they have a benchmark and you have something documented to see where were you back then, even when you won your season and Michelle winning her season, coming back as a second time. Uh, so I'm sure there's a lot of gratification in yourself as a coach and as a mentor and very, yeah. as I would say, in a, a senior uh, mentor now and being able to say like, hey, Michelle, like I see this opportunity for yourself. I totally know that you're ready and capable of doing it, but it also lets you have other reflections from other people who you might've surrounded yourself with from the show or not from the show. You have a lot of power to uplift people that you want to give that opportunity to. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And I think um, it's so important and, and something my mentors taught me, which thank God for them. And, and I do, I thank them quite often. Mm -hmm. uh, learning to hold the door open as doors open for you, you you have to hold it open for the worthy people behind you so uh, yeah um uh one of the other young ladies on my team she's based out of vegas her name's agata um she was one of my sous chefs at burger back in 2014 and i just kind of wow. kept her close and i got her right out of culinary school and she's just wow. killing it uh and i don't have kids i have a cat who i'm very proud of and yeah sorts of things that, that fill me up but i can say like seeing uh seeing this team grow from like when I had a got a uh, back in 2013, 2014, and same thing with Michelle since 2017, like seeing that, uh, seeing that growth is just, uh, it's one of the things that fills you up. Um, there's not a, a ton of like hu human or, or uh, satisfaction for the collective in food mm -hmm. and beverage. Um, it, it's tough to, it, it, it's an interesting industry that way, but uh, it does, it does fill me up as a person when I, like see these guys get just getting better and, and really taking advantage of the opportunities. Um, uh, yeah, I would like to approach and, you know, sitting here today, uh, in this position in the company still with Gordon, but I just, I want, you know, try and encourage them to keep moving forward too. So, yeah. yeah. Do you find, do you find that in some ways you feel more connected or maybe in some ways more distant and less connected to the people that are in the company that you might've been more connected to in other positions? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, um, it's a really good question. I think, um, this has been, there's been a really big learning curve for me, uh, with the, the new company structure. Um, like I said, I used to be the only one based in the United States. Now we have right. like 40 people in head office and, 
Um, so it's, it's a culture and I've never worked, I've never had an office. Like I, mm. I'm a backpack that has my whole life in it all the time. Yeah. Uh, since I was a kid, you know, when you're going to sports games, you're going to school, like I have yeah. always had life on my back, uh, very <laughs> portable, uh, in yeah. a way. I have like an office with a door that closes and there's like this office, <laughs> this corporate office culture. Uh, so there's a big learning curve there. And then just to get back to your question, like it, it's, it's great and it's amazing because I get to interact with the people in the C-suite above my level and um there's just more cohesion like I'm not working as a silo Mm -hmm. as well Uh, but then I'm also um uh I'm like a extroverted introvert I suppose like Mm -hmm. I I quite like working alone and I like my methodology and the same way yeah the way I approach things so I was having a really hard time and it's still uncomfortable to some degree but in the beginning, like working on something and there's like people watching, I'm like, I'm not, I'm just not used to it. Yeah. And it's almost, um, I don't like fancy myself an artist. It's not that, but it's almost like, um, you know, you don't show a painting until it's finished kind of thing. Like not yeah. like, go every step of the way they want to like go through that process. And I'm, I'm that way with not just with food, but with just with like work problems or work, um, situations or projects together I just I like to be in it with my own thoughts so I've had it so there's good and bad I am learning yeah. how to uh, in well, the chit chat too I'm really bad at the chit chat <laughs> it's tough uh, well you're it's good tough. you're good here with us I don't know <laughs> yeah how that translates <laughs> but like the like in the hallway uh, kind oh, of stuff. yeah but yeah I again I'm just um I wasn't used to it I've never had a co I've never had a co-worker that I see literally like five times you know, I'd see the people that work in our restaurants, but not, yeah, yeah it's just very, very, very different. Um, but, but and then, and then you have to be like the teacher. I mean, well, and you have had that role of the teacher, yeah. the, you know, when we see, we've seen you in Hell's Kitchen and those kinds of things, but I guess, you know, I know what you mean because it's like, you've, you've honed in on something that, you know, you're really good at, but you're just so used to doing it your, like, I guess your processes, your way by yourself. And then you have to like, you know, now you have to take that and explain it to someone else or it's just, it's, but it's, it can't really be, it has to be in words or in, in the way that everyone can understand, not just you, but you're so, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, but You're no, so used to, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's not like we're all working together on the same yeah. Like, like nobody's trying to stitch anybody up. Like I, it's a, it's an amazing team. I I'm like so lucky uh, for my bosses and, and the, uh, all the senior leadership above me, I'm learning so much. It's really incredible, but I do, I like, I just feel very, like, don't look at, you know, like uh, Christina, <laughs> in the beginning of Beautiful when she says, don't look at me. And then she like- I, And up. the beginning of which? Sorry, the I missed song, that. The song Beautiful? In uh, the song Beautiful? Oh, yeah, the, it, yeah, it, Christina it, Aguilera. Yeah. yeah. And then like right before the song starts, like on the LP, on the- Yeah, whatever. I, no, 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 like, I haven't heard it. Heard it like like uh, I, I just don't look at me uh, yeah. But, yeah all good yeah but again at that I think that we we talked a lot about last time about your humility and about just how you are you always have your head down and just doing your work because you love what you do that hard working nature and then humility it stays with you and it gives you the ability to really understand the example you just gave right mm-hmm. like it never leaves you it's a part of your ethic and character so mm-hmm. to be able to bestow that as a leading by example to your peers, to your sous chefs, to your executive chefs and other people you're training, I think that's a gift because a lot of people don't have that in by nature, or if they do, they can sometimes lose it. Mm-hmm. And when it's so ingrained in you, and though, and I feel that Rachel and myself are similar in that way, we just work harder. We work harder because mm-hmm. we don't feel like we've hit a certain point where it's like, we're good. We're good enough. If anything, yeah. it's like, we're not so good critical. enough ever. Yeah. So yeah. what else can we do if we want to continue to show that we have done enough to feel like it? And it don't still never feel like enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how we do that to ourselves. <laughs> I am, uh, yeah. What's new with you guys? What have you been up <laughs> You're flipping it to us? Oh my I, God. Oh yeah. my God. Um, it's a real kiki. I, it looks really good. I like it. It looks uh, shorter than the time I saw you. It looks nice. My hair? Yeah. Is it oh, shorter? thank you. It is. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Yeah. It's funny because I like it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's so sweet. It's, I actually like, uh, it was actually a bit shorter even. It's grown up a bit. I think I want to chop it a little bit more, but it's just, yeah, thank you. It's just so easy yeah. to, to do too. That's what happens. Like you do the first big chop and you're like, oh, I don't know. I know. 
Well, yeah. because like, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to age you. I don't remember how old you are. I don't care, but I'm like, 40. I, it's okay. I don't mind. You're for, how old are you now? 43. 43. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, it's in January. I'm, I am. Yeah. No, I just had to do the math quick. Yes. 43. Are you an Aquarius wow. too? Uh, Capricorn. January. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, Chrissy ain't no Aquarius. No, we're, cause this. she's, she's <laughs> way too earthy to be an Aquarius. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Capricorn, like all the way through, like yes. all funny. the way through. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're both, uh, so January 31st and then February 1st for him. So oh, okay. very, yep. very close. Um, yep. but, uh, what the, I don't even know what I was going to say. You'd caught me off guard. Thank you very much for that compliment. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, about my, uh, my age came up and then, Oh yeah. Like, yes. Oh yeah. 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 No, I was going to say like, as, as you know, as women, I mean, as people, not even just women, anybody ages. And, you know, I definitely noticed that my hair is now getting a bit thinner than it was yeah. finer. Yeah. So I can't do the, like, I always wanted to have this long, luscious hair, but as I get older, I'm like that, that is such a pipe dream. Like that's just never going to happen because now it's like the longer it gets, the rattier it looks on <laughs> me. And I just don't want to put it back all the time. And I'm like, fuck this. I'm just going to chop it off. So anyway, that was, that's my story. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, but I'm, I'm scared. It's going to like, I've already like entered this, like period of my life where I'm wearing chinos quite a bit and I'm like mm. got a real gym teacher look going um which I guess has always been okay. there move from like the athlete like the like more student style to like mm -hmm. definitely vibes uh -huh. <laughs> short too soon in my life that I'm just gonna like let myself go completely so I'm oh I'm my holding God. for a couple more years uh because I I've got this um I, I always call it like the crossing I don't know if you guys have crossing guards uh oh yeah <laughs> Cool yeah. yeah. Our crossing guards, or at least the ones I grew up with, always had super short hair. They were older ladies. They were like everybody's Nana or Aunt right. Carol or whoever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of perm that was like a tight rod perm. Yes. It was like really short. And so there's something I'm like, yeah, those ladies are smart. They like get their hair set. They don't have to do much. They, you know, wash mm -hmm. it. And like it's a, it, it's gonna, it's like part of my like light, uh, my life timeline. Like I know at some <laughs> point I'm gonna hit where I'm going to have a tight rod perm um, right. real short hair. I'm scared if I start cutting my hair now, I'm going to get there in like the next two years. The next time. <laughs> no, it, okay. Like, like, elementary school, uh, <laughs> hair, like wear a bib. Okay. Number one, first of all, first of all, two things. Yeah. First of all, perms apparently are in for yeah, young kids. Some, even oh, it, was it's that? A, yeah. It's like the guy, the young, young, young yeah. man. Yeah, I know. So which really? is Oh yeah. Yeah. Like young high school kids. I love it. Number two, yeah. short haircuts can be hot. Like they don't have oh, to yeah. be granny. Like they can be really sexy and there's some pretty like awesome cuts you could do. So don't sell yourself mm -hmm. short. If you want to do it, go for it. hair grows. I know what you mean. Cause you don't want to start getting lazy and then just yeah. like, and but... <laughs> short hair about your, uh, maybe a touch shorter than where yours yeah. is now, uh, back in my, my roaring twenties. <laughs> time to be alive um <laughs> what i found is that when you have short hair it actually it's more maintenance as far as getting haircuts like mm. if you have, that's true you can't just let it go i can go six months and nobody's gonna know because it's just, just like up in a bun that's or, true. or whatever but what yeah. is really like you know beyond your six weeks or however your you know whatever your hair growth cadence is uh that's what i didn't like about having that's short hair. true that's true quickly like my hair would dry and you know the things you could do yeah you know, with the stuff, but, um, and at that point you kind of just, at that point you just, yeah. And you need to like make friends with a, with a hairstylist at that point <laughs> and just have that them as your totally. friend. Cause one of my friends actually is a hairstylist and does my hair. And if otherwise like, cause you just don't, and then she just, she charges me less rates. It's yeah. Kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. You can do um, it at the cover of the home and they're just, you know, chopping your hair as they're cooking you a steak and turns that's into what we did. Glass no, we didn't really do glass of red wine. And... Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, like totally. Wrong. Yeah. What's that? I said, I like where all this is going. We just, okay. like, <laughs> I know, totally. It's like, I should have a husband already or something. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> your, your like it's getting longer. Yeah. Thanks, Christina. It is getting longer. And even though my headphones are, are doing a nice job, I started thinning right where my finger is circling right there. So I'm like, oh shit, I got to grow my hair out because I don't really have an interest in doing topical treatment or taking other sources to keep my hair growth. So the thing is I play with my hair a lot, always since like, as I was a kid. So when it would get long, I would cut it to get rid of the, mm -hmm. the, like the fix. 
But now that it's thinning, I'm like, oh, fuck, I got to grow this out. So I've been growing it out. But my friend who is a stylist, who's a yoga student of mine, has been a stylist for like 35, 40 years. So I finally went and started seeing him. So he's like fading the side in instead of like chopping it and then right. it blend in. So yeah. it's been growing up for about seven Good. months. Good job. And those Thank that are you. listening that are still in their 20s and their babies, just fast forward through this because you're probably bored. <laughs> <laughs> but, do, but do know that it is, it is on the horizon. Like It is. Exactly. For now. Exactly. It all very much is exactly uh, okay catching, catching me up on your last year and and we just got into like a deep <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure but well, honestly not- what have you guys been doing honestly christina like not not too much has really changed we've uh you know knock on wood i mean that's not really a bad thing necessarily we're still plugging away doing this uh mm-hmm. working full but time did and have, like didn't you have like some construction weren't you like renovating <laughs> or something last me time? yes Holy it- shit, you got right. a good memory, Earl. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Is it done? Like, what did you yeah, do? Yeah, I'm, I'm in it right now. She's in actually. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah, because I think we're s- in a room, but it, I'm this- sitting. It's a very, it's not that exciting because there's not much on the walls or anything, but like, we've got, we, yeah. uh, we ripped up the old floor. We, we have these old it. wood floors, yeah. fur floors that we've exposed. I'm, I can't work. really turn it that much because I've got that's things okay. plugged in. Yeah, but yeah, it's cute, hey? The way it came out. I'm happy that my husband finished it yeah. <laughs> after two years. And that's the couch that I'm going to be sleeping on when I go visit Rachel in May in, in the Okanagan. That's my bed right there. Um, oh it? my God. I've apparently. <laughs> and um, Do you have the same uh, partner that you had that he was cooking, I think? Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, my partner and I are not together anymore, but we are still very good friends. Okay. So uh, basically, yeah. Um, I think like not very- that of you but uh yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> yes i know it, well, it, it that's def, that's some of the diplomatic way of saying it um i think the the main thing is that it's i had a lot of uh growth i think for me like when i have a week or a, a month or a year i find that this multiply by the measurement of time that's that follows it so i feel like a week is a month a month is a year a year feels mm. like a freaking decade for how much self-discovery i do and strive yeah. to grow and develop uh so in terms of since we last chatted i was still working in retail a little bit i was thinking of moving to toronto actually and made the all the moves to do so and actually went for a grand total of five days and actually made the choice and then i was there with my mom helping get set up i acquired the 10 different jobs at different yoga studios because I wanted to reboot that career, which Vancouver didn't have for me anymore. Got there. And after three days of crying nonstop and realizing it was more than just all the things that come with moving, I realized I needed to be in Vancouver. Mm. So I packed up, flew back with my mom, and then Mm. I went back to what I was doing prior, teaching and a bit of retail. And then three months of that, I got tired and stopped teaching, didn't renew insurance, left retail, and applied to tons of different jobs. Uh, relating to my areas of interest of service or wellness or management and things like that. And I actually, uh, just before coming on the record, this just finished my first on-site day um, post-virtual training. And I'm the new, actually, I haven't said this publicly at all. Um, <laughs> hopefully I, I am and will still be, <laughs> as the time passes, the actual client experience manager slash office manager of a performance and rehabilitation clinic in East awesome. Vancouver. That's yeah. Great. Yay. Yay. Thank you. So it's we my have first management jobs. job. <laughs> yeah, it's my first management job um, to apply that stuff I've done in other jobs. I've never worked in the clinic, but it's still, it's like wellness with physio, Cairo, RMT, all the stuff that benefits claim. And yeah, so like I, I had, and I also had COVID, um, like very light intensity COVID, but still, so that all happened. New job, hiring, interviews over, over uh, like like FaceTime, covering COVID, and then getting still getting trained on the job for the next few weeks. That all happened in this month of March. So it's been yeah, that's a lot actually. A lot. In one month, that's true. Yeah. Um, As but your the voice podcast, goes up, it's been yeah, a lot. It's been a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's been some breakdowns. There's been some major tears, and Rachel has gotten yeah. some of that um, from me. But you know, this podcast has been the continuing anchor for Rachel and myself. And, you know, we really want to launch this podcast. We are going to monetize it one day. We are going to create a 
um, a presence for it that people will be able to appreciate it and for it to be our main squeeze, mind the pun. So like that's that. what we've been up to. Juicy. Yeah. And we're, yeah. <laughs> well, we just appreciate you coming back because I, I know, I, you know, not like open, but I'm, I'm <laughs> tomorrow do, too. Oh my God. Um, at uh, some point if there's a, uh, there's any appetite for it, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to uh, be chatting with you guys. You're so oh, sweet. Good. Well, it just feels Speaking. so lovely to have the feeling so rich. I was going to say in, in your response to that, it's nice to have that kind of rapport and connection with someone that physically you may have not met in real life, but mm-hmm. it shows the power of communication and relationships and that you can build very sincere, meaningful relationships, which could transpire into real life should all parties be in the same place at the same time at some yeah. point in the future. That's what's really amazing about having this kind of platform. And yeah. what's and also what's happened in the past couple of years just with COVID and people doing more of these kinds of things with mm-hmm. virtually, and we've talked about that before, but um, I have a very important question. Um, when, when, it, when are the restaurants coming to Canada? Soon, like, ah! like this year soon, but um, <gasps> what? yeah, there's definitely like some big, uh, big talks uh, with, uh, with some potential partners in Vancouver, uh, oh. for- um, there's one other place and I can't, I'm not remembering, but those were the bigger wow. ones. And wow. it's part of the reason why when they, um, kind of separated from the London business, uh-huh. uh, called it Gordon Ramsay, North America, because there's mm. it go up to Canada and then down to the islands, right. uh, in the bigger picture. So now it's coming. He knows that Gordon, Gordon loves Canada, uh, Toronto. I mean, he's really likes Toronto, um, a lot. Uh, I yeah. haven't talked yeah. much about any, other kind of territories but um and he's got a massive fan base up there and oh yeah 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 it's uh but yeah it's definitely um on the table in a, in a pretty big way which is exciting that's so awesome and now will you be very integral in that uh yeah i would uh yeah like you would be yeah america so yeah yeah some of the under uh falls under my scope which is exciting. awesome yeah and maybe that we'll see amazing. you up here one day <laughs> Uh, me, uh, we'll be cuddled up on that green couch there. Hey, it's all, <laughs> I, I, anytime, anytime. For sure. It's, yeah. it's kind of itchy, but it's, you know, we'll get some blankets going. Depends if, depend. okay, where I live, believe there, it or not. It's just, yeah. We you say get, onesies? Yeah, we can all yeah, get Yeah, like, awesome. Yes. Love it. Oh my God, it. yes. And then we it. can just have like tons of reality TV show crashing of everything yes. that is so horrible under the sun, but we just have to indulge in it. <laughs> what are you guys watching right now? What's the, what, what are like a couple of your reality TV shows that you're into right now? Well, I first have to say Hero's more of the reality TV junkie than I am. Like okay. I, I watch a lot of series um, like, which is, this is not reality TV, but like, I just been watching Life and Beth with uh, Amy Schumer, which I okay. love and that's okay. hilarious. Um, but what have we been watching? Well, uh, some like, what, is it cake? <laughs> Is this cake? <laughs> is this, is this, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. haven't watched it, but I, I did see a preview for it. Yeah, yeah it it is cute. It's it's, it's cute. just it, it just puts a smile on your face. Like it's one of those kind of goofy kind of shows. Yeah. But what about you, Hero? I am um, well. I'm I'm watching always like ten shows at once, if yeah. not more. So for me, like I've been watching Survivor since 2000. So I'm oh. obsessed with Survivor, both the Australian version, which is like way better than the American. Sorry, I'm not trying to be insulting in that, but they just like, cover way more content and material. We're uh, pretty OG. Like be honest, but yeah, it's fine. You're not. Gonna, <laughs> we won't get our feelings hurt about Survivor. No, exactly. No, no. Probes, I love you. Um, but no, I mean like Survivor for sure. Uh, when it's on air, Project Runway, um, any syndication of Drag Race that is in English, because I I, I can't tolerate dubbing. Unfortunately, it's too hard to, in- to interpret. Um, the Mass Singer, it's so bad. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. I watched the first, <laughs> the second season. It just annoyed me. I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. I know it's okay, so bad, but so Canada's flip. Got Talent just started as well. Oh, Sorry, okay. go ahead, Rach. No, I want to flip the, this is an interesting question to yeah. Christina. Do you watch reality TV? I don't know if we've ever asked you that. No, we haven't. Not really. Um, I uh, I was home. Uh, I went back home after we finished filming uh, for a quick weekend and ended up seeing my actual, my first, uh, my first girlfriend um, from high school. We're still like really good friends. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, like she was like, <clears throat> 
the executor of my will. Like, she, like I oh. trust. Her. Wow. <clears throat> Sorry, family. I love you, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, in any case, I went home. Uh, we, I like had cooked, uh, cooked for us. We had dinner and then we went in and I was like, oh, do you, did you want to put something on TV? Cause she was yeah. watching the news and I was like, I can't with this. Um, so like, do you have any shows you need to catch up on? And she put on, um, I think it's called Love at First Sight. Okay. These people like they like don't see each other they like talk through a wall yes i've oh. seen that yeah okay. so when i i went she was like halfway through an episode and had another one to catch up on but it was like she started with season two not one which is i <laughs> absolutely love her um started from like episode eight or nine like there was like two and a half episodes so to be fair i started watching it like at a juicier part i suspect yes. uh, of the season right uh, it's horrible uh, but like really, <laughs> like really it, it just blows my mind that like yeah i don't know are people that i i don't i don't i hope that somebody is studying us i hope that what's happening right now with reality tv and social media that it's actually just part of a bigger so like um socio sociological experiment yeah sociological thank you that's the one yeah. I knew <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed that I got that too. <laughs> this show, especially this, like, it, love is blind or love at first sight or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. Are we, are, are, are people that desperate for connection or for love? And like, how has that construct come to be? Is that like, has totally. it always been that way? Is it social media? And so you're seeing things and you're like, oh, I want that. Mm -hmm. uh, is it like reality TV was like, hey, there's a lot of desperate single people. Like, why don't we make a bunch of shows like The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, et cetera. Right. But it's like, very, it was very interesting to see people like willing to make such a big decision on somebody they like had never seen before, like mm -hmm. literally physically um, seen. And uh, so it was really interesting. Um, and like at the altar, they basically decide like then they're in their like wedding garb yes. and they either say I do or I don't. And so there was like three couples that like ended up not getting married and they were like, yeah. no, this isn't going to work. And then there was a few that did. The one guy that did look terrified though. I'm like, I was, like he looked scared for his life. Mm -hmm. And I know, um, no, uh, I don't really watch a lot of, um, a lot of reality TV. I tend to watch uh, like crime shows or mm -hmm. okay. books, uh, limited series kind of. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'll yep. watch it like uh like Tinder Swindler. Like yes. you guys. I love true crime I, stuff I like that. I didn't see that. Or yeah, Bad yeah, Vegan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm oh. in the middle. I haven't finished yet. Okay, uh, I won't say anything. Just started it. Uh yeah. You know, yeah. It's interesting what you say about what you said about reality TV because I feel like um don't you think that reality TV is is Okay, we've had a number of, of guests on the show that have been a part, either even producers from mm -hmm. like Drag Race. We've had a couple of producers on recently that have really, you know, told us, hey, like it's it's pretty real, actually. It's not oh, yeah. that, as scripted as you think it might be. But mm -hmm. what I do feel like is people are auditioning and being on these shows because it's another way to get into the industry of acting too, don't you think? I mean, uh yeah. I think, yeah, this, at this point, I think it kind of is, I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many shows out there now. So I'm not to say that people aren't genuine mm -hmm. when yeah. they, when they go into it. I'm not really saying that. I just feel like it's, it's definitely become another gateway. <laughs> right. right? Yeah. 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 It has. And you know, I was going to ask Christine, I don't think we asked it this last time. Do you ever watch yourself, not necessarily uh, yourself back, but do you ever watch the seasons of Hell's Kitchen that come out? Or do you just let them roll and whatever people might talk to you about, question. then it's whatever they talk to you about. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I usually do. I don't always watch it in real time. Like I won't yeah. be like, oh, yeah. I'll get home at eight o'clock on Wednesday, but I'll watch it <laughs> or two. Yeah. Um, if I am able to watch it in real time, I, I usually use it as an opportunity to engage uh, with people on Instagram or uh, mm -hmm. to promote the chefs that are on the current season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm really important um mm -hmm. I know for as a contestant even as a sous chef I mean not everybody likes me and that you know that's fine uh, not be, not everybody likes me in real life either and right. I don't like every everybody that's just the way the world goes um yeah, yeah. I think it's important 
I, I know it from the contestant side and then also from the sous chef side um, and, yeah. and you're not prepped for it. And I do try to like at this point prep my contestants. But uh, when I was when I was a contestant, I had no idea that people were either going to be cheering for me or loudly not cheering for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you get to and, and Instagram had like kind of just come out uh, when my season aired back in 2012, like it was mm-hmm. fair, right. it wasn't like the platform it is today. No. Uh, and I'm so thankful for that because I can't even imagine what, what other comments are there. But um, I try to, if, if I watch it, if I can watch it in real time, I try to use it to engage and then to mm-hmm. like in my stories, highlight uh, something great that one of the contestants or the team might've done uh, right. because it's important. They, I, I tell every time I'm a Sue, I tell them, Gordon told me not to read the comments. I will always pass that on to you because for every 12 that you're like, oh my God, this little kid or, oh man, I this lady had cancer and she watched me and like, you feel good, you feel good. You'll get to that 13th one and it'll like, it will punch you. It'll like just yep. cut you right down. And yep. uh, it's hurtful. Even like people that are uh, emotionally sound and and confident and, and you know, on a level where, um, you know, they're not, not taking that stuff too personally or too to heart. It, it just, it, some of it is just hateful mm-hmm. violently mm-hmm. um so yeah i i uh don't always watch it in real time but i do uh i i do watch it yes um okay. also like a couple hundred people that are backstage the lighting crew the audio crew the producers the pas like cr- the crafty people like art department i mean there's so many people that work on that show it feels yes. it i i, I want to be one of the numbers that that helps tick the ratings or yeah check a box because it, I mean we're all it's not just the contestants or Gordon or the chefs like there are hundreds of people that are putting in those hours away from their yeah. family oh, yeah. uh, to sacrifice just to give give these kids like an opportunity to to better their career so mm-hmm. um, yeah Absolutely. and it, it's also I also love to see like how they how, what they do with the content that I was firsthand there for <laughs> yeah the dorm like we could watch we could ask the producers if we wanted to i'm just not interested okay um, the idea of like gordon knowing what i do when i go home would like no i i not that i'm doing anything like overly <laughs> right but like i like the separation and i always want to give the contestants that too like if they're yeah. up there storms and they come down and cook beautifully i could give a shit like yeah that that's what they do at home so uh so it's always interesting to see uh who the smokers are uh right what, what little like romances were budding yeah <laughs> might have known about uh, and then the confessionals too to see who was like talking smack on each other totally yes i think there's some confessionals i uh talked to uh one of the producers about it this past season i was like you should let me and the other sous chefs like pop in every one yeah and, and like give insight from that um, and you've been on the show so you understand it yeah yeah and yeah. I, yeah, I do watch it. Uh, that is but, amazing. But, yeah. Here's yeah. actually, and Rachel, you might be wondering this too. I don't know if it's on your docket of just things that come to mind. Because mm-hmm. I think, Christina, you know, like we don't prepare questions. Like we just, it's very <laughs> candid. So this is all like spitfire. Have there ever been any actually can, Canadian contestants on House Kitchen? Or do they permit Canadian applicants for that uh, production? I, I, I don't, I still think that they're not allowed. Um, yeah. Okay. We, uh, we've had two from the UK, but they were, they had US residency. Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, they're not, uh, they're not allowed. Cause we get quite a few requests and, or I'll get like messages in my, uh, in my, in my DMs or whatever asking, Oh, how do I apply? I'm in Canada. Yeah. Uh, now, nah. uh, Damn, yeah. Wait, I, maybe it's an insurance thing or yeah. Could be. yeah, I'm not sure. Now, you know how what? about, how yeah. about for, how about for guest judges? <laughs> That, that have podcasts that have juice in it, but it's spelled differently. <laughs> you like to buy a vowel. Um, I had well, <laughs> anytime. Next time we're filming, uh, we, we can organize. I'll, you can come down and eat on set. I can uh, get that sorted out for you, but I, I'm no. not sure about guest judges. I'm just <laughs> you guys can, like, you, you could, you could go live from the dining room, just kind of set up your little. Uh, oh oh my God. That would be amazing. That would be so, incredible. That would yeah. be incredible. Hey, I mean, that would that would take something off my bucket list. That would be awesome. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. But also another way to think of it too is that if you end up opening up in Vancouver, then there's also That's... then a some kind of syndication of that too. There's some kind of correspondence from like, oh hey, here is yeah. some people that have been part of the pro the project, and then people that are in the city that it's affiliated with too. That's actually kind of great as well. That's true. It is interesting because we we actually just had on um, the very first survivor actually has Canadian contestants now. Yeah. So. So we just had on the last season's winner, who was the first Canadian to be on Survivor, right? Uh, not to or, be on Survivor, no, 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 but the, the but to win, win Survivor. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe it's uh, a yeah. Maybe they don't want the Canadians coming down and <laughs> maybe like, no, no, or but, anything. But I will interject yeah. here because it is on the same tangent. If people are going to be opening up Gordon Ramsay restaurants in Canada, then Yes, you could have an American winner and then have that visa extended to them to go and work in Canada. But that's what I also wonder too. Mm. Now, Canadian budgeting is very different. Yeah. Very different from that's North true. American production. That's true. However, I could only imagine, and I wonder if a Canadian would be polite enough, not, or sorry, 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 be not polite enough to be on a season right. of Hell's Kitchen Canada. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because you imagine that we'd be crying. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, you're sorry. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Oh and we should have like an underground, an underground HK, uh, like yes. a fight club, but like Hell's Kitchen. Yes. 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 Send it to Gordon and be like, here's our pilot. Yes. What do you think? Could you imagine? And then Gordon would be like, oh, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. No. And then he would, like, of course, do his shtick. And the Canadians, and, and then and he'd come up and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, really not sorry. Get to work. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'll wear my plaid. I'll bring my, you know, my uh, freaking hockey stick and my, what else is so Canadian? I'll, I'll, I don't cook, know. I'll cook with maple syrup <laughs> instead of olive oil. Yeah. Yeah. Per oh, yeah. 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 Maple syrup. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just speaking of, I, something I, I just before I forget to ask blah, 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 I can't speak uh just before here and I popped on I just said to hear like I wonder if it's the same down where you are I mean I know you're kind of all over the place but just where, wherever you've noticed this here for example restaurants are having a hell of a time hiring people post well, is it global well, okay 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 we are so wiped out yeah there it's very very difficult right now okay wow yeah. yeah. So, and is Coming this all, all positions? Sorry, like all, posi all positions, all positions. Okay. Yeah, we're going to see um, probably on a top level, uh, people come back in, into the workforce. Um, but yeah, I mean, COVID and uh, I, I love F and I love the food and beverage industry. This is, it's my life. I live mm -hmm. every app. It's the, it's home for me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not, um, it's not that like the greatest environment physically, mentally, emotionally, it's like, it's, uh, you have these like lulls or th this kind of like preparation throughout the day. Then you have this like very intense kind of service and it it's just emotional and you're like a little family and, um, yeah. you know, you miss, you miss a lot. You miss a lot of holidays. It's hard to get time off. Um, mm -hmm. especially the front of the, I mean, back of the house is underpaid, generally speaking, front of the house, um, there's a, a cult, we have a tipping culture, um, yeah. uh, unique to the U S I, I appreciate that. But, um, there's also a culture within the front of the house where you, you end up, you make a good amount of money, but you live a lifestyle that you're not necessarily saving. Um, and I think that when COVID hit and the, I mean, ever a lot of industries were hit hard, but the restaurant industry being one, of, in my opinion, one of the biggest ones, uh -huh. mm -hmm. people had that time off and they just realized like, I don't need to be in this like masochistic <laughs> environment to like right. get a, uh, and I think, I think a, a lot of, I know for me, it was like, uh, I mean, there was loads going on. Also, we had our, our cultural climate was just un, unbelievable after George Floyd and, you know, a yeah. lot of regret, civil unrest in the U.S. It was a very intense mm -hmm. uh, time, I think, across the board in the, in the U.S. I obviously I, I was here. I can't really speak for other countries or how they were viewing us as we were, we were really going through it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do, I, I think that a lot of people, especially uh, in that 20 to um, like early twenties to uh, late thirties age, just realize, you know, I, I don't need to be doing this. I, I can do something else. And then I think remote work also, 
um, how many offices are still now only half full because companies are realizing they're giving their employees um, better life quality, not having to spend that time commuting, being able mm-hmm. uh, to be in, if, if working from home doesn't work for everybody. Um, mm-hmm. I think you describe it as uh, you're not working from home, you're living at work. Uh, mm. And I, I, I like, it really resonated with me. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think, I, I think a lot of things changed after COVID. And I think a lot of people had very significant mindset shifts, uh, yes. what, how they want to spend their time and where they want to place their energy. And, uh, I think we, we see, and these young kids, man, this next generation, like I'm all for it. These kids are amazing. Like they just get shit done. Um, and I, and I, I love it. Uh, I think my, generation, we like towed the line. We listened to our grandparents. Yeah. It was like, work hard, get a good job, get benefits, secure your future. Yeah. Uh, but it was all like, you do it the way it's been done. Um, I think yeah. these guys have a very different work ethic. And I, I'm speaking more off the back of uh, seasons 21 and 22 that we just filmed. Mm-hmm. And I, the 20 something year olds, it's like, Jesus, yes. I feel so old. Um, but man, they, like, <laughs> they challenge everything. And they have such a creative outside the box way of thinking. And I, I'm absolutely here for it. And I see during the season, we have some, pretty like I, I don't know I guess significant TikTok stars coming because we were in LA also right uh, with us and I was at the pass at one point with Gordon and uh there was a two it was a 12 top and they were all TikTokers and I was like the net worth of that table is astounding and these kids are like barely 21 wow. and not, like when I was their age I was making I don't know 950 an hour or some shit sweat yeah you know, it's you know cleaning up grease traps in my first kitchen uh, where they're like doing, you know, some dances on a, on a media <laughs> app and they're getting paid millions of dollars for it. But yeah. how can I be mad? That's so smart. Like these guys are setting themselves up. So I think you got this generation that's, that's true. Fine. There's other ways to have income and to have it from a young age. Um, and then you have these kind of mid 20 to late 30 year olds that are like, no chance I'm going back to that loony bin. <laughs> and then there's so, a lot of people that were, within 10 years of retirement age uh, that just played their money right. And they were like, if I live conservative, live conservatively, I don't actually need to go back in the workforce. I have enough mm. uh, yeah. savings. So why would I go slug it out for another 10 yeah. years, live minimally and, you know, be just fine. So it's, yeah, back to your original comment. Yes. Staff yes. Is a nightmare right now, but that wow. is- I really appreciate that whole conversation and, and explanation because, um, it just, it made me really think, especially because of that young generation you're talking about. So first of all, on the next two um, seasons, are, are we looking at still that, is there anyone over the age of 30? Can you say that? Yes. Oh, there are. Yeah. Okay. There are. Yeah. Uh, okay. In fact, one of the season 21, you'll see it's, it's, uh, it's like a little, you know, that we got some from the younger and some from the older and, and that's right. how it starts. And, uh, interesting. Yeah. It, yes. it is very interesting. Amazing. Um, yeah. But they really, man, the way they think, it's just, it's, it's wild. And I am just absolutely fascinated. And I, I can't wait, honestly, I can't wait to see what they do. Like when you, when you think about the big changes that have come throughout history, yes. because people were like daring to think differently. And uh, again, I came from a generation that it was like, respect your elders, you know, get the good job, be home by, you know, the street lights are on. And like, you just kind of had mm-hmm. these, these rules that were just there. And these guys are the ones that are like, that say, ask why, like, why are we doing it that way? Why won't right. we do it? Now, like, are, not just, but I, I think like, that's, yeah. And I think that's, that's amazing. I'm just playing devil's advocate with you for a second. Do you think now, is there a, a real sense of privilege and disrespect though, in that sense with these younger kids who maybe haven't had to necessarily work as hard doing the type of things that maybe we had to do or, or things are given or yeah, I don't know. Like, are, are, did you find that there's that mentality? The, yeah. I, I, I question the sustainability of it. Like, are yes. you, you know, yes, you're, you're making all this money or doing these like little fun dances and, you know, getting sponsored now in your twenties, but what are your thirties or forties? Like, are these guys, but are they smart enough to, to harness that money and then not have to work and just like go enjoy life and like, yeah. Hang up their like TikTok career and call it a day. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think, um, I don't think it's necessarily, um, 
I don't think it's it's overt disrespect. I think that they're just I think that younger generation is just bewildered on why did we just follow the line that was drawn for us? Like why mm-hmm. didn't you know get out of line or change right. although we did. I mean every generation shook it up a little bit and, and mm-hmm. so it's a big year for the for the next one coming through. But um mm-hmm. yeah. And I think the technology piece is a big one also. Um yes. We were, yeah, the, the style of communication uh, uh, concerns me a little bit. And I think we're kind of, so this is a great conversation. I think we're also lo- losing a lot of our history. And I think this generation is more into what's happening right now um, because we don't have, like, people don't write letters anymore. Like, everything's on an app or it's mm-hmm. right away and then it's gone um, where, you know, these guys will never have to go to the library and go to the reference section and get an encyclopedia. Right. And spend three hours on a Saturday, like reading about, you know, yeah, shallow water sharks or something like yeah. that in there. They can get it so quickly. Yes. And when information is that accessible, it, I feel like you, you're, you, you don't earn the, you don't, you don't naturally have the respect of all the work that, that Took. was there before yeah. you get you this information so quickly mm-hmm. and eat. And but I, I don't think it's intentional, but I, I do. I think there's like a lack of um, uh, uh, acknowledgement uh, yeah. to all the work that came from the generations before so that these little assholes can be doing like, <laughs> yeah. or what was, um, you know, making a bunch of money. Well, know. yeah. Here's another add on to that. Yes. And imagine, I also wonder about interpersonal communication skills. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What have you noticed even in working on set and production and outside of production going into different environments that maybe that you started in, but now you're seeing that generation of, I guess it's still Gen Z. I don't know if there's a, people that are of an age where they would be Gen Alpha or whatever you call them that are now in these positions, even a dishwasher. How do you notice yourself connecting with those generations? And similar question to Rachel, like, are they showing respect? Do they understand how you got to where you are and how others that are in your positions of higher up, do they pay respect? Do they understand? Do they ask questions? And yes, they might be opinionated and have their points of view, but they also have an understanding of respect and openness to learn in the balance of their confidence. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, yes, they showed me so much respect across the board. Um, but I think I'm in a very unique position when we're filming, um, because I can empathize with them and that I've been in their shoes. And for them, they can look at somebody that's been in their shoes and is still working side by side Gordon. So yeah. um, for that, there's it's built in. Uh, mm. For them, it, it's almost like if they were disrespectful to me, they're being disrespectful to him because he chose me and he keeps me around and I'm, I'm still that's working. True. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm at a, a little bit of an a, advantage there. Um, so I, I wouldn't necessarily take that experience and, and, um, you know, try to scale it to what's happening out in the, in the real world. Sure. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I, I think, um, uh, it's just a different communication style. I think these guys are also, um, more in touch with their mental health, um, yes. with mm-hmm. identifying and speaking to their feelings. That's I think true. my generation was, <laughs> I think my generation was the one that finally learned how to use I statements. Like when you do this, it makes me feel or like, mm-hmm. I'm, whatever. But these guys are a little bit more, um, it, my parents' generation didn't talk about anything. Like you, yeah. know, you didn't yep. swept under the rug, you got on with it. You had yeah. to stick, suck it up, you know, whatever it was. My generation, a little bit, you know, a little bit of progress, but I think these guys, and it's a great thing. I mean, uh, mental health uh, was ignored and for, for way too long, especially mm-hmm. in the, um, and I think it's great the way it, it's, it, uh, its importance is being highlighted, I think, in, in a in very much a global sense. Um, mm-hmm. I think these guys have a better understanding of uh, and feel more comfortable to like talk about what they're feeling in the moment. Uh, but it is awkward when people just have like a complete like break meltdown, and it's like, bro, you don't want to go into the walk-in for this. Like, you're just <laughs> just out here like just melting it down. Like, no, bro, okay, fine. Like, what do you need right now? Do you need a solution? Do you need space? So, right. you know, uh, I'll help you where I can. But um, do you, th- uh, I, you think yeah. that's more? You think that's more because because it is so much more accepted now that it's just like, you know what? This is me. Like, fuck yeah. this. I don't really, you know, 
yeah, I'm not going to hide who I am. And mm-hmm. which is, which is beautiful though. I mean, I think that's, that's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, but that's interesting that you say that they're all like, you're finding, but you're noticing that more. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a good thing, but I'm, I'm also curious, like what's, you know, what's the, what's the long-term, uh, uh, ramifications of that. Like, yeah. uh, when you, I, I think there, there needs to be a bit of a balance. Like you need to be able to harness your emotions and, you know, uh, have appropriate responses. It can't just yes. be same meltdown response to, oh, that was a great happy thing that happened, or that was a really sad thing that happened. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, I really hope that somebody is studying us and like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a nice little booklet. It's like, you know, every yes. Decade, everything. Yes. Um, yeah. So- Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, for sure. And, you know, here's another interesting question and it doesn't have to go into depth, but, you know, a lot of these shows and productions, they make you go through physical evaluation, psych evaluation. Is that part of that process too for everyone that's not in that production? Yeah, we, um, hmm. uh, I want to say it was like 800 questions. It probably took about three hours, this test we have to do. <laughs> and, and, um, and it's all like, do you like fires? <laughs> do you, yeah, it's like, it's intense. It's a yeah. lot. Yeah. Wow. With the psychologist uh, before we're like, we would have already made it to the final rounds yeah. of auditions. And then we sit with the psychiatrist to make sure that, uh, that we're stable enough to be in that type of environment. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this because obviously I won my season. So this wasn't part of my experience on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, mandatory that when somebody gets cut, like when they get sent home, they talk to the therapist uh, that night and then the next morning also. Yeah. There's a ther- there's a psychologist on set 24 hours a day. There's That's always amazing. Yeah, That's I mean, so covers their ass in a, in a in a big way, but yeah, it does. But yeah. I do I do think that's 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 important that's really good to hear actually yeah yeah Yeah. for sure for sure because again this is a great um aside when we had erica supanan who is the survivor winner she was saying there's something that you go through that you don't know what it's like is that when you're on the other side and once you've gone through it you also go through the grief of the fact one you know what it's like on the other side now the stuff that you don't know unless if you sign the nda and you're on there and the other side is you also don't know what it's like until you had a chance to get something and maybe, you know, it was such a small chance of winning, but it's not you that's winning it. So then there's a grieving process of that too. Mm-hmm. And so I can imagine that as well, if you're working so hard to be somewhere, especially for those that might've not just been a one time to try on and they get on, which Erica openly said it, she tried once and got on it. I can yeah. imagine people that are chefs that have tried for 10 seasons finally get put on. Yeah then they're off in the first episode. And even if they might've not been there as much, they still went through the same process that everyone else did. And yeah. then they almost are like, nope, that's gone. So yeah. then they have to grieve that. And that psychology and psychiatry help is really important to transition mm-hmm. you back into society. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah, that's all um, yeah, great observations and, and insight on that, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Christina, I wanna be respectful of your time because I know it's, we've already been talking for like an hour. What's that? I want to be respectful of your time. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. No, we could talk to you for hours. Or do we keep going? You're so, you're so sweet. Wait, are to. you, are you in Caesars? Where, where are you I right am, now? Yeah. I'm, I'm in room nine. No, I won't tell you. <laughs> um, uh, yes. I'm in uh, Caesars Palace. We, uh, I'm out here for some, um, summer menu changes. Uh, cool. yeah. So yeah, just doing yeah. a lot of restaurants and then back to Dallas, uh, tomorrow. Oh. Wow. Oh, wow. And what's the vibe like in Vegas these days? It's it's intense here. March is it? March is um, uh, one of the the like the busiest month of the year in Vegas. Um, huh. One, the weather like flips like a switch, and it's yeah. like it's perfect. Out, outside of it being a, a little bit windy, uh, I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. I think it got oh, a nice degree. Sorry, I, I can't do the Celsius. I learned American, but um, yeah, it was like a nice warm day uh like absolutely gorgeous out and then um in march uh usually our university go on spring break yep. uh march and april so you have spring break you have march madness which is our oh. college football tournament right it's a very very big deal a very big deal um, right. so, especially with betting so vegas is like wild yeah. and then we have uh saint patty's day also which yep. you know it's just another you give americans any excuse to drink and they'll turn <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can 
Canadians are like that. Canadians are like that too, my friends. Yeah, you guys have, um, I know this one, May 2-4 weekend, right? Isn't that like a, is that a thing? May 2-4 weekend? It might be, but I think it's if, it's, well, if, Victoria it's relating, Day- if it's relating to drinking, I wouldn't know because I'm not, I'm so not even in the cultures. I wouldn't know. It's, it's like 2-4, like 24 ounce bottles. Is it no, related I don't to know. that? Oh, okay. <laughs> outside of Toronto she always wishes us a happy May 2-4 weekend oh, uh, what yeah I'll have to I'll google it so the next time we does talk- she mean do you mean like May the 4th be with you no not like May 4th <laughs> <laughs> that's the universe so that's outer space <laughs> outer, outer um, space you know what that's from right yeah Star Wars I'm not okay. gonna wake up yesterday I'm so part of the fucking 90s <laughs> Hello. Oh God. Um, we do have, yeah, we do have a holiday, but you know, we also do have spring break in, in March. And do you know, a lot of us on the West coast, we get some really smoking awesome deals down to Vegas. So you probably do yeah. see the odd Canadian. Yeah. It's packed like this. Is, yeah. We'll, we'll have like a record breaking month in most of our, and I mean, like, since we've been open, like for the last nine years, 10 years in some of the restaurants, this, this month. Like it's insane. Vegas has gotten, wow. it's busier than pre-COVID. It's incredible. Wow. It's like all this pent up, uh, pent up demand. I have a question for you guys. I don't know yeah. how much. Okay. Okay. It, uh, it, this has hit Canada, but do you guys watch the Oscars? Like how do Canadians feel about uh, <laughs> happen with the, I expect you to speak on behalf of all Canadians, uh, by the way. Um, oh shit. That whole like Will, Will Smith, uh, Chris Rock situation. Was that? Oh, do we really? Hit? Did that hit your news or? Of it course it hit. did. It definitely. Okay, we don't live. We don't live. We don't live on the moon. Yes. <laughs> we'll get into. I don't know if people watch the Oscars. Uh, oh heck yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't watch it because I don't like. I didn't watch the cast. I watched it, but, it. But the key moments and that being a very obviously prominent moment that happened. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Here's one thing I will say to it, which I did not know and kind of found out by, uh, by I guess by luck. Um, again, I think I've spoken a little bit about like I'm neurodivergent, so I've got nonverbal learning disabilities, um, which is a whole list of things that affect communication, cognitive behavior, and all these things, how we show up in the world. Uh, so it's a miracle that I can even do this podcast. But anyways, point is, mm-hmm. is that Chris Rock actually at the age of 55 discovered he has NVLD. Oh, wow. What? Which I did not know. I tapped the hashtag on my profile that I set underneath my main bio on my personal handle and tapped NVLD just for whatever. First thing I saw from 2015 in April, Chris Rock realizes he's neurodivergent. Wow. Now is this not fake news? Not that I was reading. No, it seemed very interesting. That is interesting. Just to that play to play into. Yeah. I, I was really, to be honest, I was conflicted. I was at first, I was like, what the actual fuck? Like I can't be, because I watched it live. Did you watch it live? Yeah, I was watching, uh, it's March Madness, so I was watching the women's basketball game, and I was, like, flipping back and forth while yes. I was watching the basketball games, actually, and then the Oscars was, like, the third, like, commercial commercial. <laughs> right. There. Yeah. And I happened to, like, be watching it when it happened, and I didn't realize what happened, because the way, or at least the channel I was watching, mm-hmm. the camera angle, I was like, but then Chris Rock obviously said, you know, Will Smith just slapped the shit yes. out of me, <laughs> which was, like, the, like, best response. Yes. And- I couldn't, um, I, I don't know. I still don't know if I, uh, have fully digested it. Um, I don't like, I, I definitely believe in standing up for the person that you're with and that you brought and in a public, like we, if we're going to fight, we'll do it at home. If like, mm-hmm. I will always be back when we're around people, like, even if I disagree, even if it's wrong, like I'm with you, you're with me. This is how we do it. Uh-huh. Right. Um, but I think fundamentally, um, there are very few occasions that I think it's okay to physically, uh, yes. Uh, d- assault. I mean, to call it what it is, physically assault somebody. Uh, yeah. And I think they're very, very much reserved for when you're in fear, like when you're in danger yeah. or somebody else is in danger, not danger of having their feelings hurt or danger of getting called out, but like in yeah, physical. physical. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that, yeah, I was, uh, I mean, same as maybe same as you, Rachel, like a, a little bit conflicted. Like I, I, I understood like, uh, what it was, but I'm not sure that I fully digested it. But again, fundamentally, I just like, mm-hmm. you oh, can't just put your hands on people. No, 100%. Well, yeah, no, no, 100%. And the reason why I say <clears throat> conflicted is just because uh, I, I don't agree with the action he took. 
whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, but on the flip side, I also don't think it's okay for comedians necessarily just to run their mouths and, you know, uh, especially, and I, I don't know if I believe that he didn't know about her condition because apparently they like, it's like, we know we them. I don't know them, but apparently they, they're friends or they were friends. So I mean, uh, exchange about it. Yes. So, uh, like at the earlier date they had, they had like come up yeah I saw I saw some of that um so it's a it's a bit weird it's mm-hmm. kind of yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. Erica man like what other like where else is that happening? <laughs> it's <laughs> not happening in Canada as far as I know out to the world like yeah and here it's, we are just like another it's just like another another day another you know what I, I was know. you know what yeah. I was sad about that overshadowed the death of my favorite one of my favorite musicians in Foo Fighters uh, that yeah. overshadowed that that completely overshadowed Taylor Hawkins death because that yeah. happened like two days be- before and it was interesting because I was watching you know I watched like the next morning I'll watch like James Corden or just like highlights and stuff like that and I was just curious I'm like is anyone going to mention that because the Foo Fighters are huge like yeah, they were yeah. on they were on all their shows for many 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 times you know specifically Dave and Taylor not one of them in their opening remarks or the, about, about the news I- mentioned it such a at shame. all wow. so so that was that was more just like really okay so then obviously some people love drama like god yeah. it's crazy uh, especially america um yeah and what a what a what a shame like what a loss um Huge. my uh my first stadium concert uh was at giant stadium in new jersey uh and it was alanis morissette and taylor was wow like I'm glad that I got to see him live. I never saw Foo Fighters live, but he was drumming for her at the time. Uh, and I think wow. right after she finished the U.S. part of that tour, uh, and then went on, did a couple yeah. of gigs, and then I think got uh, got hooked up with Foo Fighters after that. But um, yes. yeah, yeah, he was just absolutely incredible musician. Uh, I love, well, I love Alanis. Yeah, I love Alanis. Like oh, if yeah. there's one, yeah, she's your oh. People. Yeah, she is. And actually her brother, because <laughs> her brother Wade um, was an, inv- is probably still is, but definitely was one of the key investors in Y Yoga. And Y Yoga is where I taught and got started my career as a teacher until I shifted out of there in about early 2018, I believe. Well, so twin, I actually- Twin too. They're twins. Yes, that's right. Yeah. They are. But yeah. Wade would be a regular student in the HOT classes. He used to be a trainer mm-hmm. for the HOT program for the Y Yoga College. So I actually did meet him several times and I had the chance of teaching him once. So it was oh, really yeah. interesting to be in the room with someone that I don't know very well, but I'm like, I know who you are. You don't care who I am, but I know who I know who you're connected to. <laughs> and I know that I know that I know that's really cool. <laughs> she's she's amazing. I yeah. I love her. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you guys, I think, I think this is, uh, you ever question your own like memories? And you're like, is that, how, is that a real Yes. Question? Yes. Um, like right now. To, <laughs> <laughs> there used to be this show that I watched. It was called, I think it was filmed in Canada. Uh, you can't do that on television. Yes. He was on that, right? Yes, so she I was. I've never heard, um, and I think it's why I always say, because it's Atlantis. Uh, but yes. I think it's also like my uh, Jersey mouth. Like I just have a lazy tongue. <laughs> but I can remember really vividly, I think it was a- a- Alistair, Alexer, Alistair was like one of the guys mm-hmm. uh, and they'd be in the lockers telling jokes and like, they would be like, Al- Alanis and like, shut the thing. <laughs> yes, Alistair. And then they'd like, tell jokes. Yes! Like, that was like my first, I like was obsessed with that show. Um, That's ho- yeah. So was I, it's not the show that they got, if they said something, they got slimed. Yeah, they got, if you said, yeah. I don't oh. know, you got slimed. If you said water, the water came down. Um, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> one more and then like the um oh, they'd always eat at that diner that had like rats and like rat burgers and like the chef was always like picking his nose it was like <laughs> oh. after school um uh, yeah such a strange show like, it, was it was so weird um, yeah. for kids but um totally. yeah, i'm gonna i'm gonna google i'm gonna google that i'm gonna i've google never that even heard of done. it that's because it's never... not your it's christina you and i are around the same age i'm yeah. a little couple years younger than you but i it's it, it, I don't think it was even on for very long. It was a very bizarre. Yeah. It was, yeah, really it was bizarre. Like key uh, years of a uh, key key portion of my formative years, but yeah, uh, yeah. yes, it was. Uh, I loved it. It was one of my one of my favorite shows. Oh, that's so. I love that. that. Was, like, 
funny. I, I love Perfect. that. Christina, there's a couple of things that come to my mind as well. And I know that when you mentioned like when you're in Vegas, you love to go down to Fremont and go down to like the old Vegas. Yeah. What I'm curious is that as an extension of that question, where are your favorite places in Vegas? Forget about if it's in like food and beverage, which obviously some would be, but when yeah. you don't have to be, I mean, I guess you're always representing Gordon Ramsay, of course, but when you're not like in a Gordon Ramsay yeah. facility, where, what lights you up? Where do you go? Where are your uh, places where you want to? Uh, to the other end of the sh away from the strip so we yeah. have a uh, red rock um national not national park red rock um is it no it's not a national park uh we have the red rock canyons um okay. out here like some of the best rock climbing i'm not a rock climber but i have friends that are so super yeah. fun um but they have some like really killer trails uh ice nice. boxes probably my favorite so um i would either go uh depending on the time of year in the cooler months uh, out to the canyons for uh, hikes. And then in the hotter months, um, I would drive to Arizona. It's about 45 minutes mm. away. Oh, wow. uh, there's the, we have the Colorado River. Okay. Uh, it goes through Colorado, Arizona. I mean, it's a, it's a massive, um, but there's this one stretch of it that's um, it, like in the, I mean, it, like the canyon, it's so cool. It's my, it's my absolute favorite. Um, I like to kayak. Um, oh, me too. Nice like to be alone you and do, sorry yeah. what hero you I do? have experience with kayaking continue Christina <laughs> sorry that was sorry that I was we'll circle back to that <laughs> I thought I knew everything <laughs> like, gonna be juicy. continue Christina um, that's not towards you that's to Rachel continue yeah um but yeah this uh it, it's an area called um uh Willow Beach in Black Canyon and you can kind of paddle all the way up to the back of the Hoover Dam if you want oh um my but it's just, it's, it's incredible. And I, I particularly like it. Um, I usually go at like six in the morning, super early before there's a ton of people on the water. Um, and before the wind kicks up too much. Um, yeah. but when it, in the height of the summer, after all the snow is melted up top and, um, all the big corn sheep that have to come down the mountain to get to the water source, uh, because it's not uh, in the safety of the, the height of the, yeah. of the camp. Mm. And you'll just see these herds of these like gorgeous, like big horn sheep uh, coming down to oh, like- I love that. And it's like, it's so funny. It's, God, we, it, it, it's such a perfect reminder that we are all just animals. Um, yeah. I would, one herd I would see all the time um, because <laughs> like identify them. Like the more time you spend there, you're like, oh yeah, I, they have names. I don't know what they are. <laughs> but, um, uh, there was this one herd that had a couple like adolescent sheep, like, te yes. like, like teenagers. Uh -huh. um, and how they were males and just the way they would like fight with each other like they're <laughs> like boys like they were like yeah like and then they'd get like real rough and annoyed and they'd separate and then they'd come back and be cool again and I was like man we really are just like just yeah we're all animals here but yes I would um mostly get out and you get outdoors yeah yeah uh, that's or in, like through and through I like my my feet in the dirt so girl to my heart I guess I am the same British Columbia oh my god you yeah. love oh it here my so much god, you will love it I um I live a, about four and a half hours north-ish from Vancouver so I, I I was I grew up in Vancouver but um okay. now I live in what's called the Okanagan which is like lake and wine country essentially so surrounded by lakes I paddleboard I stand up paddleboard like I try if I could do it all year round I would but we do get snow so yeah <laughs> but um yeah huge like tra tons of trails and just I love yeah. you know that's yeah that's what keeps me sane it really is I miss yeah. uh, I grew up on the east coast and our hiking and mountain ranges over there are, like just much different it's all yes trees and covered with shade and like it smells like dirt. Oh, I fucking love it. Like it's got <laughs> damp, this like dampness to it. Yeah. Uh, feels right. And it took me quite a while to get used to like doing trails on rock with no vegetation anywhere in sight. And um, yeah, when I, um, when we were filming uh, the last couple months, uh, I do yoga every morning and, um, you Good know, you. you know, I'd like have my little like morning routine. Right. And when I was, there, I was like, one of the things I said was I need to take advantage of being in LA. Uh, mm -hmm. when I was doing my, not resolutions, but things I want to accomplish this year in the beginning of the year, I realized like when I wrote them all down, I realized that most of them were, uh, work related. And I was like, this is so sad and pathetic. And what the fuck am I doing? Mm -hmm. Um, so I had to then like reassess and like, what do I want to do? Not what's going to be good for the company. What's good for me. Yeah. Right. And, uh, one of the things I committed 
to for myself was going to uh, six national parks this year. Um, so while I was out there, we were only off on Sundays, but two of the weekends I had a, I had enough uh, energy, uh, and I drove out to about th- just about three hours. Joshua Tree uh, yeah. is east of uh, mm. yeah. I've always wanted to go there. It's uh, I mean like. Oh. It's unbelievable. Uh, me and my best friend, Lainey, uh, we, we talked earlier in the year, like right around New Year's and um, her birthday's yeah. in April. And uh, we did the, she turned 40 last year. Oh, wow. Did, um, she lives up in Northern California and we did uh, this the really awesome hike. Uh, we camped for the night, just did it in and out um, in the Trinity Alps. And there's all these like Alpine lakes. And I mean, it's oh, just wow. fun. And we're like, okay, we let's go for another overnight uh to celebrate our birth mine's in january hers in, is in april so we never celebrate them right. together mm-hmm. try to uh, get together once a year um and after i i didn't spend the night in joshua tree because uh we we filmed first thing monday morning a <laughs> sunday day off um but it just like it is magic it is like it the first the first time i went out there i didn't know what to expect and i was like holy shit and the second time <laughs> I, went out, I was like okay and i brought my journal and it just pulls like you oh. can't it just pulls things right out of you. It's really interesting. Uh, it's an experience, but I, I want to camp there because they say the uh, the star, like the sky, is just unreal. The like how the uh, yes. oh yeah, no, I've heard that. Yeah. That's on that's top of my list for sure. Yeah. So I'd love to so get down to, there. Uh, Joshua Tree, and then when I I drove uh, from Dallas to LA because I took my cat with me. Uh. <laughs> and, uh, we went on a road trip. She was such a trooper. Oh. Um, and on the way back. Um, coming through New Mexico, I went to the um, na- well, National Park, oh, the Petrified Forest uh, and Painted Desert. So I've got two out of six done for the year, uh, which wow. is awesome. Um, but yeah, so free time is, yeah, somewhere quiet in, na- in nature. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. love that, Christina. It's beautiful it, contrast. It, this kayaking story that, that made uh, Hero give you the bird in the, in the middle of the conversation. What, well, what? I was laughing because like, I'm just like, I, I've never known Hero to, <laughs> are you okay there, Hero? Yeah, just keep going. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never known Hero to uh, gravitate towards any of that. And I've, we've been best friends for a while. I've never seen you on a kayak. I've never seen a picture of you on a kayak. I don't yes, know. Because <laughs> you didn't know me, because you didn't know me when I was fucking 12. That's why. And when I was nine. <laughs> you kayak it means you have kayaked okay yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna spill the major t on this while we still have okay. christina here so when i was in like fourth or fifth grade i somehow oh decided God. to go and do yeah i know i just said thank you um i decided to go and do the sailing camp so just for geographical knowledge there's <sighs> lots of beaches in vancouver it's flooded by water it's kind of like how manhattan is literally flooded by water and so we have a lot of different sailing clubs and yacht clubs and stuff, and they run summer camps for kids. And so this one had a sailing camp and a kayaking camp. Me and my friend went and, went and did it. And when I did it, because of my challenges with proprioception, dexterity, coordination, and all the things that came with my neurodivergency, I did not learn correctly how to hold a kayak or until I did eight different ways of holding it. Who ever mm-hmm. thought that there were eight different ways of holding a fucking kayak paddle? I did. Same thing with learning how to use a credit card, eight different ways, apparently up, down, front, back, side to side, angled up and down. Okay, great. So wow. yeah, I know. Leave it to me <laughs> to find all the other scenarios that no one will ever hopefully do. So anyway, I happen to be the lucky bastard that got the one kayak that capsized every single time it went into the water. So I chose not to continue doing the camp. My friend who I did it with stayed, went and tried my kayak. Same thing happened. So we mm-hmm. realized that Ty said I capsized into the freaking water and had to change my clothing with my coach or whatever, whoever our teacher was. I was traumatized. I wasn't going to go back. Mm-hmm. Then, believe it or not, I returned before I went into high school, seventh grade. I went back bravely. And then I actually had the time of my life. Learn to use a spray skirt, learn how to do your rollovers, learn how to go out to deeper sea, learn how to do rescues and stuff. And yeah, do I like that stuff? No, but do I like being on the water and using an oar and going and feeling control of the ocean? Yeah, I do. So yeah. I actually do have some experience and I have done stand up paddle the boarding. I know you have. It. I know you have. I know you have. And when you come, when you come up here, 
in May, hopefully the weather will be nice and we'll go out on the, on the lake. And I've got two paddle boards. So God, okay. there you I go. Know, Rachel, I know Rachel has seen this photo of me, Christina, I'll send it to you, but I'll give you a <laughs> visual. Imagine me like 21. I was just starting my yoga teacher training, teacher career, teaching career. One of the studios that I was going to be part of, which chose not to hire me, which is totally fine. They had a welcoming party for the teachers. And one of the main teachers at the time basically is the main owner of Stand Up Paddle Vancouver. So she gave all of us the ability to go out as a team bonding experience to go out and just stand up paddle. So me being not really much of a swimmer or going outdoors, I had two sizes too small at that point, one ball hanging out, two exist branded swim trunks that I bought from freaking Century 21 in Manhattan three years before. Okay. So literally like Speedo, but trunks with a ball hanging out. So Hilarious. I'm going in there and then I'm super cappy. My hair is turquoise at this point and twice the length of this because I thought yeah. it was a Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan. And I <laughs> wanted to obviously have a top covering. The only thing that was available was a athletic brand named Roxy, a peplum style scallop at neon green, basically Not hip bone <laughs> height and above. So I look like a fucking flower, neon green, neoprene, scallop edges, blue hair, blue boy shorts with a ball hanging out going onto a paddleboard for the first time and barely freaking out and not knowing how to stand up on my own fucking feet on water. It was hilarious it's and just, amazing. You fall in? Yeah. Very on brand though. In it way. is. Yeah. Very on brand, very much. I know all those years ago. Uh, no, I did not fall in actually, thank oh, you very good. much. But I do have a photo and I will share it to both of y'all um, the moment we finish recording because it is hysterical. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> if, oh my God. We came onto house kitchen. That would be my is <laughs> <laughs> and Gordon would be like, and Gordon would be like, he'd be like good thing. The good thing this ain't no 2005 anymore, man. Like, fuck. <laughs> 22 uh, different. 2005, not the same. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. So, what some are, memories for you. What are you eating for dinner tonight? What's that? What are you eating for dinner tonight? It's a good question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have a, a friend that I might uh, meet up with. Um, nice. I went out to dinner last night, uh, probably had a little uh, too many. I don't really drink a lot. And I actually uh, go sober twice a year, uh, the month of April. So kind Good of my last uh, this weekend and then the yeah. month of October. Um, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. We had a pretty heavy, we had this place called Delilah. It's uh, it's new. It's at the Wynn. It's unbelievable, unbelievable experience. It was a, wow. really, it was a really nice night. Um, food was amazing. We know that uh, it's a colleague, a uh, friend of mine. Um, we know the chef, but um, kind of got this like old Hollywood feel. Uh, but we we ate pretty decadently last <laughs> night. So uh, we were talking about maybe grabbing some sushi or uh, just something light uh, tonight. Fair. Yeah, mm. probably eat off strip because I ate on strip uh, last night. So yeah, there's so many great restaurants. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Great. So um, yeah, I haven't I haven't quite gotten to. Uh, although I guess it's about dinner time now. I, haven't quite yeah. gotten... I know I'm getting hungry. I can hear, I think there's pots and pans. I told my husband, I said, we're going to probably round like, let's go. You're over. <laughs> yeah, I think, so. I think so. I don't know. I don't know. I've got my head. All... Yeah. In the you never know. <laughs> yeah. You never know. What I will say is there is an incredible, all you can eat sushi place that my uh, partner before the one that I was with, when we recorded the first time with you last year, I don't forget the name of it but there's like three or four of them in vegas and it's further up by uh, circus circus and it's an open mall kind of outdoor kind of strip mall and it's okay. a la carte you don't like mark it off on the scoreboard they come over and take your order a la carte but it's all you can eat and it's really really freaking good and i wish i knew okay. the name of it but i think that'll be descriptive enough um okay uh gory there there's a called gory man uh that's usually my my go-to uh up mm. on a uh, trap in decatur um but yeah Perfect. Oh, Christina, like dinner. Vancouver and sushi and uh, we have some pretty amazing cuisine actually, specifically with sushi in Vancouver too. And we're right on yeah. the water and it's just yeah. a lot of that culture. Yeah. Yes. But I, I made a Canadian friend. I think she's in Vancouver this year. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm going to, I'll send you her Instagram. Um, her name's Lauren. She's incredible. Uh, cool. She's an artist. Um, and she did this, uh, uh, painting of Gordon and she, ta she tagged him and she tagged me in it. And it was, I mean, it, I don't like respond to everything, but like I shared it on my, not like, Oh, I shared it. Not a big deal, but yeah. I don't like 
tear people's stuff often. Right. Just uh, yeah, um, gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. But this like this painting she did was incredible, and she was mm. trying to get Gordon's attention with it. So I was like, I reposted it, it sent it over to Gordon. Long story short, she ended up coming down on set so that she could like gift it to him. Uh, she works with the um, uh, Major League Baseball. Um, she does mostly athletes, but she's trying to. Uh, she's got a great story. Honestly, I think you 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 guys should cool. check her out. She, um, okay. she had a traumatic. She wasn't an artist, or she was always art inclined, but she wasn't an artist. She's got a great story. She uh, big baseball fan. She took a line drive uh, mm -hmm. to the side door in the game and ended up with a traumatic brain injury. Oh um, wow! And didn't go back to her regular job and like leaned into the art, and now she like has a contract with major league baseball and she does like all these it, it's uh, when i i'll send you her profile to both Please. Of you guys. it's incredible yes. um but she's a fellow canadian uh just super dynamic young lady uh cool. great story uh i would highly recommend you guys uh yeah. have a conversation with her but um yeah, absolutely fantastic her name's lauren like really really cool okay uh, so i'm um, yeah making more canadian friends by the by <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you got Lauren, you got us. And if you you're again, so, for sure, touch base in Vancouver, like yeah, let us know. Please. Absolutely. Yeah, Whatever we can do to show you around how the I got, hosts. I got to get you on a, on a, on a paddleboard in a crop top with a <laughs> with neon shorts. And a you could get me into almost anything. So that is yeah. perfect with me. And I then my, my green coach. So. You know. <laughs> and Rachel has her paddleboard. It's great. Yeah, like a fucking scotch, uh, scotch pad back there we're gonna sleep on it'll be great yeah yes it'll yeah. be I love amazing it. i love it'll it be amazing and i've got yes i'll leave it at that yes it's gonna be amazing <laughs> we'll, we'll conceptualize it even more so <laughs> i love See your it. laugh thank <laughs> you thank you very much i really appreciate just how real you have always been through and through mm -hmm. and giving your time so selflessly to us and this continuation of this discussion to always continue and you know this sincere friendship it's these types of yeah. connections don't come very often so we really don't take it for granted thank you and i adore the hell out of both of you guys and uh ah. yeah it's a great conversation and uh a good way to you know just kind of uh break up the the normal patterns of thought i think you guys always have yeah. really good just i i like the way the conversation naturally goes and it's like it's super easy so uh, thank you thank you that oh means God, a lot <laughs> Great. And one day we'll, we'll, we'll be doing this like on Spotify or something. That's um, what I ask you guys, what are you um like what do you what are you listening to right now? Are there podcasts that that you like or are there creators that you love? Um, you know, I mean I I listen probably too much to some of the big name guys. Like I do, I really do like Mark Marin. Um, mm -hmm. I like, you know, his Jewish like shtick. He's 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 angry. <laughs> He's like grumpy. He's funny. Um, you know, I also, what I, I've, I've also been listening to Smartless. It's so ridiculous. Like with um, uh, Jason Bateman and um, okay. uh, oh, who else is, oh my God. Now I can't think. Uh, <laughs> anyway, like some, I, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, I listen to some podcasts I listen to are just a little bit more lighthearted, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and, and there's the odd time I'll listen to, you know, something that's, you know, like a Brene Brown type. Yeah. Type deal, yeah. Right. I get it's either like true crime, like, <laughs> like all the way on this end, or it's like motivation, self help, like, yeah. Yes. Uh, self growth, like inner connections. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. I'm like one or the other. There's not a, uh, yeah. I don't a podcast to, to be honest. I'll, I'll listen to them when they're recommended. Um, or yes. if, like, we're having a discussion and if you were to say oh yeah i listen to this po podcast about you know healthy livers and this is what it's called <laughs> right right um but i i yeah. do more out of recommendation than um like motivate it to, to do it here do you listen to is there anything that you're listening to uh as far as podcasts are <laughs> concerned i'm actually and again i mean not no tea no shade i'm actually not much of a podcast follower or listener i, I will be admitting that uh I know it's something that I would like to work on and get more knowledge of. And I know what some of those things that are out there. Um, but one podcast that I actually did start listening to, uh, as it is very much derivative of Vancouver Drag Queens and also based on the RuPaul's Drag Race franchise, is uh, Semi-Qualified Queens. And so it's essentially these two queens that were on the first two seasons of Canada's Drag Race. 
Mm-hmm. They started with their first six episodes about the UK versus the world franchise and kind of breaking down each episode and what the queens were doing and their takes on it from being former contestants themselves and are continuing to do more and more kind of one-on-one interviews with people that are from the drag race community and whatever seasons might be continuing to come up. So that is one thing that I started listening to every week for the last couple of months. But a lot of my media consumption and listening and watching definitely comes from reality TV. And then mm-hmm. whatever music I might be listening to for creating spin playlists or listening to deep house music or video game music or anything that just kind of takes me into a different training my brain off. So that's kind of my main thing. I'm very, very in the lane of that reality TV. And then uh, also I listen to our podcast for my own development, right. feedback, critiquing and making sure that things are developing and progressing from each time we record and produce an episode. And you're then awesome. I don't awesome have a lot of time way. with that. You're That's awesome all good. that way because I don't I don't listen to them afterwards usually. <laughs> So I watch them with my mom, actually. That's, I, that's a cute little side note. My mom was like, oh my God, like we, you're talking to Christine again or you're talking to Corey Wade. Oh my God, like when is it out? I want to watch it. Get Glozell on the show. Why haven't I seen it yet? Yeah. So my, my parents true. are really supportive. Oh, that's really awesome. You're lucky to have that. Thank you. Um, I don't take it for granted. And are, do you guys get into TikTok or not really? No, not really. There yeah. is obviously <laughs> an opening for that. I mean, there's obviously yeah. like a revenue stream and visibility stream for that. For that. <clears throat> Pardon me. Out of the two of us, Rachel is a lot stronger with video content and creation. And in terms of the techie part, part of my interest is more in photography as okay. opposed to video, even though they correlate. And I think we're really trying to just build our Instagram and our YouTube and then who knows down the line if somebody might have a natural knack for TikTok or for video and it's still a popular stream of content and viewership, maybe we would start creating a TikTok as well. I don't know. I've never, that's a, I've never been on TikTok ever. It's a whirlpool. It's I just a, like COVID sent me down this deep, dark, like I'm talking like <laughs> hours at a time. This is like yeah. real. Oh, like, wow. 2020 shuts down. Yeah. Like, yeah. Thing. Um, yeah. And I, I, I fell uh, um, a few places. I, I didn't realize I was going to land uh, one, uh, one being um, horse rescue. TikTok had no idea that'd be an interest of mine, but it is. And huh. Wow. Uh, this one nonprofit called a uh, Colby's crew. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, obsessed. I, I like buy their merchandise obsessed. Oh. <laughs> and this, so- uh, there's this, uh, there's this person that does, um, uh, uh, this program is called under the desk news. And it's just, um, she does like the day's news, but it's only like maybe two minutes long and it's like 30 seconds of each like top huh. story. So it's like the best way to consume. It's what I need. That's it. And if I want to go read more, I'll go on NPR, Washington post and read, yeah. um, look up more about it. But it's like, it's the, it's news in a way that is palatable to me at this point. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, just so yeah. overwhelming, but um, yeah, TikTok sent me, or sorry, COVID sent me down a, a, a very, very deep, not so dark, but very deep, <laughs> um, very deep hole. Uh, and it's it's also very interesting to see the younger generation of uh, lesbians and how right. they how they are. Uh, yes, huh. very, very interesting. Uh, and very set. all the self confidence and right. uh, uh, how out. Uh, people can be and I it it really makes me think of like moments in my life where I was around older lesbians that were like oh yeah you guys have it so easy and I'm like oh do we but now I I see this generation and I'm like you guys have it so easy yeah remember here I don't know if you went through this because you are uh as Rachel so kindly pointed out uh younger much younger than (laughs) right Um, right I I didn't know what you were gonna call them but yeah (laughs) (laughs) we'll take it being like a young gay and we used to say to each other are you family like that's how we would ask if you were gay oh. um, but yeah you would or if you were talking about somebody you'd be like oh yeah I think she's family or oh yeah I'm family oh, okay. that's how we would say it. and it was like it was so covert and now these guys are like oh I'm a I'm a femme top dominant top femme which yes like, they, like words and it. it's it's interesting that it is like, talking code and and the generation before me talk even more code and um yeah yeah. that's true christina um i don't know if i actually have heard the term the the term it used in that context Mm -hmm. um it could have just been based on circumstance and growing up in a liberal city perhaps and all Uh, these things but but in terms of but in terms of um connecting with people i think for me i would kind of 
what would I say? I think I would say, I think I would just say, are you gay? I mean, yeah. I think I was so innocent and just so kind, kind hearted in terms of just wondering, like, are we of the same identity? You know, like, do we have a similar outlook or understanding of humanity? And part of it might have also just been self explanatory, maybe just energetically, maybe there is more acceptance, perhaps, even if it wasn't verbalized, it was still an energy of like, yeah, okay, I'm mm-hmm. either I, you can come closer to me or I'm comfortable with you or I see you. Mm-hmm. Um, and also I'm all, I'm also quite sheltered maybe in that respect too, in terms of um, like, I went to my youth group when I was 16, I met some queer kids there and, you know, made some friends from that. But besides that, I didn't really have a big gay social circle. And a lot of my friendships were one-to-one too. So I didn't really have a lot of queer friends. Mm. So I wasn't really mm. in that. I kind of wish I had something a bit more. Yeah. Maybe I will in these parts of my life as I continue to get more comfortable with exposing and going out there and getting over my social anxieties and stuff. But I like the fact that the terminology of you asking, like, are we family? Mm-hmm. I actually think that's really endearing, even if it may have not been the intention behind that. Mm-hmm. It yeah. sounds a lot more pure, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. In a similar but different way to people saying, I'm femme, I'm mask or lipstick or chapstick, or I'm a trans mask dom top. Like there's all these other things that we use as indicators to help others understand how to associate with us in a way that we want to be associated with. But it also, in some ways, so much language can also limit uh, the ability to understand others to relate to us. So I feel like it's such a, because even for me, I say like, I'm an average guy next door. Like, because mm-hmm. I am, yeah, I'm a down to earth average guy next door. I'm unconventional and outspoken and look at life in a way that I feel is very different from most queer men or gay men. But, you know, and I say like, I'm neurodivergent, but it's not in the way of like um, putting a crutch or a label. It's more like, here are some identifiers to help bridge those conversations of understanding how we can connect on a similar level. Mm-hmm. But I think there are certain generations that look at this the opposite as a way of discrimination, as a way of, you know, don't put yourself in a box. But at the same time, everyone does different things to put distinguishing factors. And that's exactly what you just spoke to. Yeah. And it's interesting because there's, there's even more, like, even though people don't really want to be put in necessarily a box, there's more labels nowadays than there ever have been. Agreed. So it's like, (laughs) yeah, there there is, uh, it it is, it's, it's interesting. And I think, um, uh, to your point, Rachel, it, it just feels, it feels so much more individualized. And like, I think my, in my coming up, uh, in coming up queer and um, my, my experience there, like saying something like, are you family to somebody that you, you think might be gay? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's almost like you're, you're more so asking, is this a safe place rather than saying, yes. oh, way. Like, yes. which is also funny because to, like family isn't always a safe place for people. So right. it's, it's all like, I really love linguistics and like the, the social structure around it. But um, yeah. yeah, now it just seems to be, uh, which is great. Like you need to be able to self-identify, but it does more about the individual than the collective more so now than it had ever been. And yeah. I don't know, maybe, that ne- maybe that needs to happen. I, I just, uh, I would hate to see it like, when I think about like Stonewall, like all like the, the how rich and untold the gay history is, and right? It took for you to be able to, you know, label yourself with like the six things that feel identifiers feel right for you, like yes. you know what it took to get there for the you know for the gay alphabet to continue to expand. <laughs> yes, the gay LGBT. BCs. Yeah, I remember. When the, I remember when the Q came. I remember when the I A came. Like yeah, letters adding on and um, wow. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just, it's, it's really interesting. Anyway. It really is. This has been like, seriously mind blowing. I feel like I'm I, like yeah. spitzing, I'm crying. <laughs> I'm like beside myself. I can't believe like I'm talking to you right now, even though we are just human. It's just like, I mean, if I could give you a hug, I would very, very I know, respectively I feel, I know. not hug you too tight, but I would hold <laughs> you as long as you would let me. Oh, my <laughs> we'll be there for a while. Okay. <laughs> on my green couch yeah is that what what you're laughing at (laughs) (laughs) oh god oh man so hard on that sofa (laughs) 
Oh my god! It's like it's like the uh, what's the show? Not Three's Company, but like like the newlywed <laughs> games or whatever, where they sit on the couch and they're like, you know, so and so said this when you have Whoopi, blah 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 blah. It's like I did not say that at all. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> the newlywed game. The newlywed game. The newlywed anyway. game show. Oh, I oh. love it. That was good. Oh my I god. Know. Bad. Hey. Everybody's so bad at it. And I know. I'm starting to do the pee pee dance, you guys. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Christina. Right Thanks for, um, I know we went like well over, but. Um, not a problem. Thanks for not. I felt like the Oscar music was going to come on and it was going to gently say, okay, we're, we're saying bye now. That would be um, pretty funny here. No. We, should, we should bring that into our, okay, that anyway. Would funny. Yeah. That would like be a really funny. Painful interaction. Just, yeah. You know, oh, we got to go like start rolling credits. Hey, yeah. can, hey yeah. can you send us some sound clips from the house kitchen when there yes. is those kind of awkward moments and we can just put that in. <laughs> That's funny. Yo, exactly. improv sound team. Check, check. So many, uh, so many good ideas, uh, you know, bubbling up from this conversation, right? right? Absolutely. Any- well, hey, we we advocate for ourselves, and others advocate, hopefully, for us and themselves, and that's what you do. You put the love out, and hopefully, people yeah, ripple exactly. it forward. Yeah. Poor Rach, look at her. She's like, she's really no, cool. I. You know what else? You know what else, though, Christina? I sit all day for okay. like I I work from home, so I like sit, and I'm just I, like I just have to stand. I gotta, you look stand. gorgeous. I gotta I gotta shake it out. Pose, yeah, um, darling. Pose, darling. Pose. Um, <laughs> I can't dance. Um, Christina, please let's stay in touch. This has yes. been yes. Yes. phenomenal. I, I, I know we will meet each other in person in the flesh one day for sure. I, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, we'll shoot you an email. Uh, let us know of that lovely woman that you were talking about that lives yeah, in Canada. Yeah. We'll we'll for, get uh, that information. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. Let me know when, when it's time for part three. <laughs> oh my God. Absolutely. We will. Well, maybe we little... could do one, uh, when, once the, the season's air too. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. So Abs- we can do some Q and A's if, if any, I don't know if, if people that listen to this, watch the show too, and, and ever have questions. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll spill all the secret. Well, yes. all the secrets that my NDA allows. I was for sure. And Christina, that. I just want to let you know, cause you got a lot of things going on. I don't know if you mentioned this to you. Your video actually has the most views on our YouTube channel. You have had over 10,000 views on oh, our wow. YouTube channel and have accrued for over half of our channel views, which is just over 20,000 views um, because of your episode. So yeah. we have like 150 comments and people saying, we would love to see more of Christina. We love her so much. She's such a badass. She's such an inspiration. The things yeah. you might've heard in other ways. So People love you. We love you, obviously, from the heart. And so anytime that you are available, we will happily connect with you yeah. in all ways possible. Um, we should take some um, take some questions uh, when you post this. So if people have questions they want me to answer, they can put it in the comments and then- Absolutely. Uh, and then you, you, you rope them in for the-, for the yeah. That's a great, great idea. Great idea. <laughs> but let's do it. Well, Jimmy in Alabama. That's a yeah. Great, you know? <laughs> yes. I love that. Yeah. Well, okay. a little, little planning. Anyway, we'll um, do it. yeah. Uh, Thank you for mentioning that, Hero. Yeah, because that's true. Yeah. No, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, I love love chatting with you guys. And uh, yeah, when it's time, we'll get on. We'll get on for another one. Yes, and Absolutely. let us know when you're in uh, in BC, so that way we can make sure you have the best time possible as well. Yeah, for sure. And don't forget to send that photo of you in the. Oh, I'm <laughs> sending it. I'm <laughs> sending it. Just don't forget the comment. <laughs> yeah. uh, I anyway, she'll be able not to. Have a great rest of your night and an awesome weekend. And yes. uh, talking to you again. Thanks, much love, love to you. Thank you awesome. so much. Okay, enjoy, enjoy your, your night. Bye. <laughs>